The Northern Territory is the stage for the country's greatest milestones in indigenous justice. These Aboriginal stockmen are on strike. They walked off the job over a month ago. Its Aboriginal legal services have been on the front line of these battles. In Darwin, Bill Ryan is the director of the North Australian Aboriginal Legal Aid Service. He's taken responsibility for having Nola return to her natural parents. There are a lot of people that fought very hard in the probably late 60s, early 70s to establish Aboriginal health and legal services. The Territory's largest legal service is the North Australian Aboriginal Justice Agency known as NAJA. It actually is the most important and the largest legal practice in the Territory with responsibility to represent the most marginalised and vulnerable. Some excellent lawyers have worked at NAJA in the past and so that gets passed on through word of mouth. That then creates its own uh, enthusiasm. Beth Wilde worked her way through Naja, becoming managing criminal solicitor in 2016. I was dedicated to Naja. The work that they do is so significant and important in the Northern Territory. How would you have described the state of Naja throughout the last year? I would say teetering on the edge. In November 2022, an internal email sparked a bitter feud that would cast doubt over Naja's future. CEO Priscilla Atkins wrote to three board members raising concerns about the conduct of the chief financial officer, who denied the claims and was cleared by NT police. Chair Colleen Rosas later accused Atkins of forging her signature on a contract extension. As soon as the allegations were levelled, I resigned. Atkins was sacked by the board in February 2023. She sued them for unfair dismissal. In the months after her departure, the head of HR was suspended, four directors resigned, and the principal legal officer, along with dozens of lawyers, left. I think once you get that exodus of staff leaving and people looking for other opportunities, then it's very difficult to recruit. Naja had five acting CEOs in 18 months. Its third was Olga Havnan, who arrived six months after Atkins left. It just sort of struck me that it was an organisation that needed, you know, some real focused attention on sort of key things such as, you know, governance, making sure that you had good policies and procedures in place, that there were adequate, robust systems, things like HR, finance, IT systems. Olga Havnan says shortly after arriving in August 2023, she discovered problems. For example, they have a telephone system that wasn't set up and configured properly, so that many calls, particularly the ones coming in from the prison, were going unanswered, and this was happening constantly. I don't know how long the phone system had been operating like that, but it was very obvious that we were missing hundreds of calls a day. I mean, that's not acceptable. She says it was hard to hire enough lawyers to meet demand. What was also going on was that Naja was developing, I suppose, a very poor reputation and it was definitely not seen as being potentially as an employer of choice. Havnan developed concerns about the board's ability to oversee the organisation. In the Fair Work case, the judge referred to a KPMG report that was tendered as evidence. It concluded the board hadn't evolved in response to the agency's growth and the CEO and directors did not have a good understanding of the board's role and responsibilities. I think probably lacking in really good understanding of what good governance is and what it takes and what's required, given that this was a large organisation funded to the tune of, you know, $30 million a year, public money. Um, I'm not sure that people had the knowledge and the skills to be able to perform their duties effectively. Ultimately, she decided the relationship with the board was untenable. It was up to me to make that decision as to whether or not I was prepared to continue to work with a board um, that I didn't have that confidence and trust in. Havnan resigned in November last year. Less than a week later, Naja suspended its criminal services in Alice Springs 
an office once staffed by 17 lawyers, had just three. It's devastating, I guess, is the way to, to describe it, particularly, you know, I've worked at Naja for so long, it was my whole job um, for so many years, so to then see people um, without access uh, to a lawyer, um, it, that was really uh, hard to watch. NT barrister John Lawrence has represented Naja's clients for decades. He says suspending services has had a serious impact on people's lives. There are a lot of people in jail now who shouldn't be. There are a lot of people in jail for too long where they shouldn't be that long. There are a lot of kids in similar boat. Leanne Caton was appointed acting deputy CEO in February this year in the eye of the storm. She helped the organisation recruit more lawyers. Naja managed to resume full services again in April. After a lot of blood, sweat and tears and hard work, uh, we were pretty much ba back to basic staffing levels. Ms Caton says overhauling governance was a priority. When I first started there, there had been a number of audit reports done and, um, and we compiled those, collated those reports and compiled an uh, executive leadership plan. So it was about how we were going to address the urgent needs in relation to governance of the organisation and compliance with the government funding bodies. When Colleen Rosses' term as chair expired, she became deputy. Hugh Woodbury's appointment as her successor sparked controversy when serious domestic violence charges against him were made public in June. We support DV victims. It is just poor judgment. And this is what I mean about an unskilled board who doesn't have the ability to environmentally scan and see what, what uh, potential issues may, ar may arise over these poor decisions. The whole thing that's been going on is a desperate bid to retain power. So they just keep moving these deck chairs on the, on the, de <laughs> on the top deck of the Titanic. Priscilla Atkins won her unfair dismissal case in June this year with Judge Natalie Charlesworth describing Colleen Rosas as an unimpressive witness. Unable to make the changes she believed necessary, Leanne Caton resigned. It was the dysfunction of the board, the poor governance practices. Um, I was concerned about my professional credibility. And then the issue with the, the chairperson's um, significant history, just couldn't do it any longer. Naja's troubles caught the attention of the Commonwealth and Territory Governments, which fund the agency. In February, a Senate Estimates Committee heard about 75 Naja clients went unrepresented in court. The issue was raised again at another hearing in June. Yes, there is uh, certainly uh, serious discussions going on uh, between the Commonwealth and the NT Attorney General around the concerns that we have. Uh, in relation to the service of Naja, in relation to the board of Naja, and these are taken very seriously. Last month, government agencies wrote to Naja saying they had lost confidence in the board and directing it to address financial and governance concerns. A spokesperson for the minister said they were still waiting for a formal response. The law in relation to ASIC prevents them from being dismissed. The only thing that can get rid of them is if the government, and they seem to be suggesting this now, at long last, and this should have happened years ago, just stops the funding. Last week, Leanne Caton circulated a petition calling for a vote of no confidence. Naja's co-founder, Natalie Hunter, signed it. I'm more than happy to be the first to sign this. Several board directors have announced they're stepping down. Colleen Rosas remains. She has declined to be interviewed, but told 7.30 she intends to resign as a director at the right time. Its new CEO, Anthony Bevan, started today. In a statement, Naja said it had commenced changes to its board as part of the next phase of an ongoing program to strengthen governance and operations. Leanne Caton says Naja is too important to the Northern Territory to fail. We need an Aboriginal legal service more so now than ever. It is vital to ensure that our people are, are provided with a culturally appropriate quality service 
uh, to assist them through the justice system.